but it never happened. So, I, you know, I, I, I'm just saying what I'm saying. And running for third ward don't have to me to say what I'm saying because I've been saying this a long time. I've been a community activist for a long time. I was president of the Flint branch of the NAACP because I mean I'm an advocate for social justice. And this is just nonsense. Poor rich. Mr. Mr. Alex said this is not about poor and rich. Well, go on the north side and see if it's about poor or rich. Go over to the town, over to the culture area and see if it's poor or rich. See what area looks the best and is maintained. Culture area have their own police department. They have my community college police department that patrols. They have the University of Michigan that patrols. That has arresting powers and all like that. What does the North End have? Plus, you got the state troopers go over there and the city of Flint. Please, Mr. A don't offend me. Please don't never offend me. It is about black and white. And you're trying, and Richard Paul, you're trying to get elected. AC, AC. I'm, I'm, yes, sir. How may I help you? I want you to address the council. I most certainly will. I apologize. Okay. I apologize. Thank you. But, you know, for someone to say. It, I, I understand. You understand my passion? You're excited, your passion. I'm very excited. Address the council. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing it as best as I can, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So it is about issue of rich and poor. The poor you have with you always, I guess. That's what Jesus said. So it is about rich and poor. People's tone change when they're running for office. That's why it's dangerous to get in these seats. Because before you become elected official, you say one thing. Then when you become elected official, you say and you do something else. So I'm offended that the financial manager, he doesn't consider Floyd J. McCree theater, but everything that's considered is downtown. And I'm offended, and I'm appalled. It don't matter, because the people of the, uh, of the north side of Flint, we understand. The people of the fourth ward, they understand. Well, the seventh ward, Maybe they understand, but I know a portion of the greater portion of them don't. And I think they'll stand with me for what I'm saying than for somebody who wants to give the rich more tax breaks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dumas. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council? The Thank you. My name is Chris Delmarone. I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, councilman from the 6th Ward, uh, you had said you were going to ask some questions, and, and these are some questions that I would like uh, asked and maybe answered. One is this, uh, will this certificate be transferable? Can it be transferred from the current owner to a subsequent owner? Um, what will the new taxes be? What would they be without the abatement? And we heard mention about 200 jobs. Uh, and it sounded like that was a mixture of construction jobs and, and jobs at the theater itself. I would be interested in knowing how many jobs will be created at the theater itself after, after the construction, after the improvements. Um, in regards to jobs, it, it, I've stood here in the past and, you know, we, we, we've done many projects in the Flint community. Smith Village, the Kettering University Gateway. I'm just, I'm going to wait till this little short meeting gets over. And then the uh, KW uh, Water Authority. You know, Smith Village, if you recall, that was promise, a promise of many jobs for the Flint community, and we saw those homes manufactured outside of Flint, outside of Genesee County, outside of the state of Michigan, 
and uh, at least they were made in the United States, I guess, and then they were brought in here to Flint. The Kettering uh, University, the, the gateway there, uh, they wouldn't even hire local residents to cut down the trees along that gateway. They, they had to get a company, again, from outside of the state of Michigan to do that. Uh, the K. Downey Water Authority, that's a promise of, I believe it was 75% of the jobs would come from within the district, but the problem with that is the district includes Flint, City of Flint, City of Lapeer, Lapeer County, Sanilac County, and Genesee County. So I, you know, I really don't foresee very many 18-year-olds from the north side of Flint being hired to dig a ditch, to lay pipeline in Lapeer County somewhere. I, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think that's going to happen. Now, you know, the abatements we've heard tonight that some people believe that the abatements will attract businesses. And, and I, you know, I would fall along that argument in, in some situations. I mean, if you wanted to build a, any type of business in, in the middle of the desert, you might need to offer some type of abatement for a company to move there. Uh, but in this case, this evening, we're talking about a fixed building location, the Capitol Theater. Now, if this abatement is denied, I do not believe for one minute that the Capitol Theater will be moved somewhere else to another community where they're being offered an abatement. I, I mean, it's not going to happen. The Capitol Theater will not be picked up and moved to another community. So sometimes in the, the realm of possibilities in regards to an abatement, one must ask, a community must ask, do we have something that people will move here or stay here irregardless of an abatement that's offered from another community? And I think in this case we do. It's the location. It's the fixed, let me call it a permanent asset. The Capitol Theater is not moving. It's not like having to lure General Motors or Toyota Motor Company to Flint, Michigan. This Toyota and General Motors, quite frankly, could move nearly anywhere in the world and run their operations. Now, the abatement might help attract General Motors. The Capitol Theater is already here. So there's no real need for the abatement. I believe there, there, there could very well be things going on other than just the application. And, and by that I mean it's been reported in the Flint Journal that one of the uptowns had, let me say, their hand in this project. I could be completely wrong, but that's what was reported in our local paper, the Flint Journal. So my questions would be, again, is it transferable? What will the new taxes be? What would they be without abatement? What's the value of that property today? And what will it be after uh, completion of the project? Thank you. <laughs>